Introducing the Anatomic Single Bundle ACL Reconstruction Procedure. Arthroscopic surgical approach for anatomic ACL reconstruction requires three portals, an anterolateral, an anteromedial, and an accessory anteromedial. The standard anteromedial portal will be used for arthroscopic visualization and should be placed close to the patellar tendon and adjacent to the inferior pole of the patella. The accessory anteromedial portal will be used for drilling and should be lower and more medial than the anteromedial portal. With the surgical markings in place, incise the anteromedial and anterolateral portals. Insert a ConMed Linvitec shaver to excise any remaining ACL tissue. Creation of the accessory anteromedial portal is made under direct visualization with the arthroscope placed in the anterolateral portal looking medially. With the knee flexed at 90 degrees, palpate the medial joint line. Under direct visualization, insert a needle just anterior to the medial femoral condyle directed towards the intercondylar notch. The needle should be above the medial meniscus to avoid damage. Advance the needle to confirm access to the femoral footprint of the ACL. Using an 11 blade, incise the skin making sure to orient the blade away from the femoral condyle to prevent damaging the articular surface. Switch the arthroscope to the anteromedial portal. Mark the center of the femoral ACL footprint using a microfracture awl. Once marked, use the bullseye native footprint ruler to assess the footprint of the native ACL stump. With the ACL footprint identified and the center marked, insert the bullseye femoral footprint guide into the accessory anteromedial portal with the knee flexed at 90 degrees. Place the guide at the center of the ACL footprint. Once the correct position is achieved, advance the guide pin into the femur a few millimeters to notch the bone. Back the guide pin out to check that the guide pin correlates to the mark you made earlier in the center of the footprint. Using the guide to position the guide pin, hyperflex and elevate the knee. Advance the guide pin to the lateral femoral cortex, noting the aperture to cortex depth, then advance out of the skin. Continue advancing the guide pin out through the skin laterally, using a twisting motion to remove the femoral footprint guide. Insert the monofluted sentinel drill bit over the guide pin through the accessory anteromedial portal with the cutting edge facing away from the femoral condyle and advance the drill bit to the femoral ACL footprint. Using a piston-like back-and-forth motion, advance the sentinel drill bit to the desired depth cautiously to prevent blowout of the lateral femoral cortex. Pull the drill bit back slowly until the blade is visible in the joint space. Keeping the hand off the trigger, slide the sentinel drill bit past the medial femoral condyle and out of the portal, making sure to keep the blade oriented away from the condylar surface. Using the XO button drill bit to drill the femoral channel, advance the drill bit through the lateral cortex. Using the XO button drill bit as you would use a standard depth gauge, manually pull back on the bit to hook the head of the drill bit on the external femoral cortex to confirm the aperture to cortex length. Remove the XO button drill bit, leaving the graft passing guide pin in place. Place the two free ends of the number two passing suture through the eyelet of the guide pin. Then, pull the guide pin through the femur laterally, making sure to keep a finger in the suture loop to prevent it from being pulled into the knee joint. Once the suture ends are retrieved laterally, pull the looped end of the suture all the way to the entrance of the femoral tunnel.
Switch the arthroscope to the anterolateral portal. Next, insert the light wave ablator into the anteromedial portal to mark the center of the tibial ACL footprint. Set the angle of the pin ACL guide to 55 degrees. Insert the tip into the anteromedial portal, placing the tip of the guide into the center of the tibial ACL footprint. Next, advance the external guide sleeve flush to the anterior tibial cortex. Using the ConMed Linvitec M-Power 2 handpiece and pin driver attachment, advance the guide pin until it meets the point of the guide arm. Then depress the pin ACL drill guide lever to remove the sleeve. Remove the pin ACL guide from the guide pin and joint. A curette can be placed over the point of the guide pin to protect against inadvertent advancement when drilling. Be sure to use the appropriate size badger or sentinel drill bit to drill the tibial tunnel. Using the appropriate size SE graft tensioner drill guide, place the guide in the tibial tunnel and position two breakaway pins and then remove the guide. Next, place a probe into the accessory anteromedial portal to bring the loop of the suture into the joint. Retrieve the loop through the tibial tunnel using suture retrieval forceps. With the suture loop exposed externally, load the suture strands of the XL button loaded graft into the passing suture loop and pull them through the femoral tunnel, making sure to keep the graft construct outside of the tibia. Pull the XL button loaded graft into the joint and through the femur while hyperflexing and elevating the knee to ease the graft passage. Finally, ensure that the XO button has flipped and is seated. Load the SE graft tensioner suture separator. Spread the whip stitch strands radially as you load the SE graft tensioner. Tying the appropriate bundle strands to the left and right tensioner wheels allows the bundles to be individually and accurately tensioned. Apply the desired graft tension and then cycle the knee to alleviate laxity. Hold the knee at 15 degrees of flexion and set the desired final tension. Next, load the appropriately sized Genesis matrix onto the tri-lobe driver. Ensure that the knee is in 15 degrees of flexion. Advance the Linvitec Bioscrew Hyperflex guide wire into the tibial tunnel and in the center of the four graft bundles. Load the matrix screw and driver onto the guide wire and advance it through the tensioner and into the tibial tunnel until it is flush with the external tibial cortex. Lastly, remove the SE graft tensioner and breakaway pins and follow the normal procedures to close the incisions. Note the anatomic position of the final graft placement. Performing an anatomic ACL reconstruction using the accessory anteromedial portal provides improved rotational stability compared to a non-anatomic reconstruction. Ranging the knee through flexion and extension, no graft impingement is observed. Additionally, with this technique, a notchplasty is generally not needed, except if an unnatural anatomy, such as an A-shaped intercondylar notch, is present. <laughs>